And I also wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, our scientific leadership uh, group. And uh, this is really an important uh, part of this uh, consortium. And uh, we're looking forward to your guidance and, um, and your uh, wisdom. So uh, as you know, FaceBase started in, uh, I also wanted to take this opportunity to welcome people who are joining us uh, through the webcast. And, uh, we, uh, we still have quite a few people with us. There are 40 people signed in today through the webcast. So it's uh, quite uh, a record. Um, as you know, FaceBase started uh, in 2009 when we had our initial meeting at uh, NIDCR on the NIH campus. Uh, I remember uh, Larry Tabak, who back then was the uh, director of NIDCR, now serving as the uh, deputy director for NIH, came to uh, uh, share with, uh, from uh, NIH's perspective, and how they wanted to look at the development of uh, phase space. And then, uh, um, so basically, uh, the phase space is supposed to help to empower the biomedical research community, exploring uh, high throughput technology, and placing a greater emphasis on global health, and putting science to work and translational research. Um, you know, uh, six years later, I think many of these uh, goals still remain highly relevant. And looking at what um, we're uh, embarking upon uh, today, I think at this meeting, what uh, we uh, more sort of a, um, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish, and we really wanted to look at uh, when the data submission will start and then how we can work closely with the hub to uh, finalize the uh, metadata sheets, we are very grateful that uh, many of you participated in this discussion about the uh, metadata sheet on uh, imaging uh, data. And we're, we have another one on the uh, bioinformatic uh, metadata sheet. I wanted to spend some time to discuss this and then uh, um, make sure we're all in agreement so that way we can facilitate the data submission to the hub, and then from there uh, to make sure our uh, research community will get to use the data that we have worked so hard to uh, generate. And I uh, uh, also wanted to touch about how to uh, uh, integrate new data with the existing data. You know, in the past five years, I think FaceBase uh, worked really hard, both at the hub at uh, Pittsburgh and also uh, with the Spoke project work together to generate some really useful data. And then you can already see uh, many of the data being used in uh, various publications, scientific presentations. They're uh, actually crediting the uh, um, face space as a source for uh, this data. It is uh, quite rewarding uh, to see that. And also wanted to uh, explore how uh, each one of us can uh, be an ambassador to help to uh, promote space space, you know, whether it's through uh, Developmental Biology Society, uh, American Human Genetics, uh, and also uh, the Gordon Conference on Craniofacial Morphogenesis and Tissue Regeneration. Uh, the next one is going to take place in 2016, in uh, March 2016, in uh, Ventura, California. It's about an hour from here. And that is really uh, a, a key gathering moment for people who are doing craniofacial uh, research and stem cell related uh, um, topics. And AADR, IADR, of course, it's a, always been a, a very useful venue for us to uh, share the progress of face space and others. You, you know, I know many of you probably have uh, ideas how we can publicize the uh, uh, products in phase space, and then I'm, we're looking forward to hearing from all of you and how we can uh, promote phase space uh, as we move forward. And also the uh, uh, hub and spoke and spoke spoke interaction, and this uh, really will uh, really be vital for the success of this uh, uh, endeavor that we're all in together. Um, uh, we 
have had really many uh, very fruitful interactions between the uh, spoke and the hub and also among some of the spoke projects. And then uh, this is, of course, an opportunity for us to identify new ones and then uh, renew the ones that are uh, ongoing. And also, I think we should look into how we can increase the translational value of our data and uh, looking at some of the opportunities that are available uh, from NIH, from other uh, funding agencies in terms of uh, dental, oral, and craniofacial tissue and organ regeneration, and then how to use the data we have between the mouse study and uh, zebrafish and many other models and the human data, and then how to use that to bridge the gap between basic research and clinical practice, and then uh, take that into uh, to uh, benefit our patients. And um, so I think really this is another uh, area that we can spend some time to uh, to focus our discussion. And then last but not least, I hope you'll have fun. And I know Carl has uh, put together some nice dinner, and we have a poster session later today uh, with uh, drinks and alcohol. And you <laughs> can, uh, can relax and uh, <laughs> get. <laughs> Yeah, but um, enjoy the weather, and uh, uh, I'm sure you will make a lot of new friends and and uh, renew old friendship, and um, have fun. Thank you. And Steve. All right. So thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Chris and Carl and everybody here who worked hard to put this together. I'm looking out the window and wondering whether I should just bag my talk and just stand at the window <laughs> and look outside the view. So uh, thanks, Yang, for the introduction to the face-based talk. And right, so let's, thanks. let's think about why we're here, because there are many reasons. Uh, face-based is a research consortium. It's also a service to the community. It's intended to promote research, not only in your groups, the people we directly funded, but to promote research in the wider community by presenting these data sets uh, for use by other people. So Sumnath is here to, to hear about the various data sets that he may reuse in his studies. A lot of the projects, most of the projects that are funded are producing the kind of data set that if it goes into an investigator-initiated R01, the reviewer is good, it's not hypothesis-driven, it's discovery, uh, and it, you know, it goes down the tubes. But those data we recognize are incredibly valuable, not only for you, but for other people to reuse them. So this is a way of generating those data sets. There we go. Uh, we want to develop those, so we want to foster. We have a lot in craniofacial uh, developmental biology, craniofacial morphology studies. We have a lot of very gene-specific studies. They're very reductionist studies. But we would like to be able to foster some more systems-level studies, more comprehensive across various uh, types of data. So when we started FaceBase, as Yang pointed out, uh, in 2009, uh, the whole idea was to develop the technology, get the data out there, data coordination. Uh, admirable job was done with that, but that was all mid-face. It was clefting and development of the mid-face. One of the goals was expansion into new anatomic areas relevant to craniofacial biology. We've accomplished that with the assembly of this consortium, and we're hoping in the future that we're going to get to the point where not only does this foster new studies and new understanding of the developmental biology and genetics, but also it has some practical use in the treatment of people who are affected by these dysmorphologies. So today's webcast, we've never done this before. So we have people online who are listening, some are watching, we have the Max show here, uh, we can watch. <laughs> you can tell there's a time lag. Uh, all right, so be sure to tell people what you're doing, not only what data you found, but what you're going to generate. <clears throat> Let them know why they should come back to FaceBase in future months or years, 
and look at your project to see what's there. So early on with FaceBase, when we first started, we had a choice. We could have hid the consortium until we had a lot of data, or we could get it out there and let people know what was going on. And people visited FaceBase before we had any data, and they didn't come back. Well, now there are lots of data, thanks to the people who worked so hard in FaceBase 1. So let people know why they should come back and look at your project periodically to see what's useful. Right? There are also, I'll talk a little bit about additional funding opportunities for using face-based data, and I'll mention BD2K. So we have uh, a grant program, we have two actually, that we have, we have two grant programs that are uh, RO3s, large RO3s, not the traditional small, uh, you know, 50,000K, 50K small grants, these are large enough to analyze data. I know Somnath has had some of those grants. So we created one, I basically copied one that Emily wrote, and put FaceBase in it. So the idea is to encourage people outside the consortium to use those data. So if you know informaticians or biostatisticians who uh, are in a position who look for data to apply their techniques to, let them know about this. It's up on our website or they can contact me. And this funds them to take the data that you generate and use it in further studies. And this funding these is a great way for me to demonstrate that the money spent on FaceBase is worthwhile. So that's always appreciated. And the requirement is that these people are going, and we use the NIH word expected because we can't require things like this, but we require them. Uh, they're going to share their data back through FaceBase. So it becomes self-reinforcing. People do additional analyses of the raw data on FaceBase. We distribute those to the wider community through FaceBase. There's also the potential for donations of data as well once, once things get rolling. We also have, I'm sure people at ISI especially have heard a lot about Big Data to Knowledge. It's an NIH initiative. There are funding opportunities for things like software development, software hardening, development of analytical methods, training in, in data analytics. And uh, those announcements, you can find those funding announcements on the BD2K website. There's also something that's been put together, which is like face base on hormones, you know, steroids. Uh, it's a data discovery index. There's all kinds of data sets out there, right? How do you find out what's out there? Well, in face base, all the relevant data is at the hub. So we want to make sure that people outside of our community will get our stuff listed in this index, and we should also look in this index to see if there's stuff that's relevant that we can link to from FaceBase. So this just got off the ground. There's similarly going to be a software discovery index. If you need a certain type of software, do you write it yourself or you find out that somebody's already got it? So that's going to be developed. So these are things that I think our community, both within FaceBase and the wider community, should be aware of. Uh, you may be aware of this is you are all going to share your data because that's why you're part of FaceBase and that's one of the requirements. But for the rest of your grants and for the people in the audience, be aware that NIH has expanded its genomic data sharing policy. And Max, don't listen to this, but you notice that NHGRI has made all data genomic, right? And uh, so this literally applies to large-scale projects with the definition of large left open. There is no, there are examples of large, but there's no rigid definition of large. But you should be aware that NIH in general is catching up with the genomics community, which has always been great about sharing data. FaceBase, whose purpose, and there are other studies like FaceBase, other consortia, that we're going to be trying to get as much data that people generate out there for other people to use as possible. Now, it applies in the written policy to large with the caveat that the institutes can say that this applies to smaller genomic projects. And genomic means genomic, transcriptomic, medicine, anything omic. I guess they couldn't call it the omic sharing policy, so it's genomic. But we would like to see as much data as possible shared. And FaceBase could be the person place to share those data once you know, when Carl, when Carl says he's ready to start taking on all kinds of other people's data. But there's more information there, and Emily, who's in the audience, is the NIDCR expert on data sharing policies. So if you have questions about this, talk to Emily. 
Lastly, there's some introductions. We've already had some, but I just want to point out, Susan, you want to raise your hand? Susan Lowenthal is here. She's the grants management specialist that handles your awards. She's the person to talk to about awards and budget issues. Don't talk to me. I don't know what I'm talking about in that regard. <laughs> talk to Susan. Be nice to her because she handles your budget. <laughs> also here, and they've introduced themselves, are the scientific leadership group. You notice we don't call it advisory because advisory actually has a legal connotation. So we fake it. We call it the leadership group. And these are individuals who have volunteered their time. We had a similar group for Face Base One who come to the consortium meetings. They can listen in on the calls if they so desire. They help the consortium and us assess what's going on. And the people we have here today, so Mike's already introduced himself. Mike's involved in projects like ENCODE, large scale data integration projects, very relevant to face base. Melissa is uh, a data curation and data integration expert, so she'll help us with that. And Max, who's on the webcast, is a human, as he said, a pediatric geneticist. So we have these three. We had a fourth, but uh, Nancy Cox got a big promotion and she's moving to another institute. And her responsibilities are such that she had to drop out. But these people in the past, the scientific leader, Dick was on the scientific leadership group last time. And he, uh, as you remember, they were very helpful if you were in phase space one. So feel free to rely on them, and we will be relying on them for opinions about how things are going and maybe other avenues. And at that, I'll shut up and we'll get on to the interesting stuff. Thank you. Any questions? Good. <laughs>